so <laughs> we're not starting over though. All right, so I real quickly go over this. Receptors, two categories, intracellular receptors and in the plasma membrane. So these guys in the cytoplasm, in order for the signal molecule to get in, um, that signal molecule has to be nonpolar and um, small to get through. And so an example of these, anybody remember an example of these? What kind of hormones? Steroid hormones, so testosterone. Uh, estrogen are examples of these. Um, example here is um, there are three different kinds of examples here that I gave. Um, G protein linked receptors. If some crazy names here. If I remember another one. Yeah, tyrosine kinase. And gated ion channels, yes. And so this is, uh, I just wanted to graphically organize so that you can see how you know it all fits together with reception. So the same, what happens in reception is the same thing. It causes a change to happen eventually inside the cell and there's a signal molecule. It's just what kind of signal molecule determines whether or not the receptor is gonna be inside the, the um, cell or outside the cell. And often ones that are steroid hormones, often when they go into the cell, the change that they cause to happen is they turn on a gene. Uh, and then that gene can make a protein and that's your response. And so usually when they go inside the cell, that's the case, all right? So what we're gonna look at today is now what happens once that signal molecule binds and uh, how does it cause eventually a change to happen? So we are in so infection three here. But I think it was, was it, was it this one right here? Where was it? Where was it where it got cut off in the notes? Um, we, right here. Well, I mean, some people told me that part of the notes yesterday, um, what I was writing at the bottom of the notes got cut off the screen. No? No? I think it was when I, I think it was here. Because um, I remember thinking that, oh, I better speak off a little bit, yeah. so I thought I did, but is this where it was at? No. It was, um, it was always talking about GDP. It was after intracellular receptors. Like, it was while you were talking about that. Yeah. Wasn't that with the GDP? No, it was this one. No, wait, it was after... Um, receptors in the plasma membrane. Like it didn't, you didn't right. say you were writing anything down, but right. it looked like you were. Isn't that right here? Yeah, yeah. it was like, yeah. All right, what I was writing here, I was introducing what GDP is, and so I was just talking about how GDP is off, off a lot like ADP. Um, the difference between ATP and GTP and ADP and GDP is the difference um, between what molecule A stands for adenine, G stands for guanine, their bases like in, um, in DNA. So I think I was writing uh, GTP is like ATP and it can break down into GDP plus a phosphate. Um, and so that, I think that's what I was explaining. Okay? once the receptor binds, or the signal molecule binds to the receptor. So transduction usually involves multiple steps. These multi-step pathways can amplify a signal. A few molecules can produce a large cellular response. Multi-step pathways provide more opportunities for coordination and regulation. So what does it mean by can amplify a system or so signal? What does amplification of something mean? Um, strengthening, strengthening it, or making it fit. 
That's right. Strengthening it or making it bigger. So I heard the word louder so you can amplify sound. All right. And strengthening it and so on. But that's not only the only thing. So in this case here, what this means is that from one signal molecule, one signal molecule can amplify and have a large response within the cell. And we're going to see how one signal molecule can do that. All right, so what happens inside the cell is what we call a signal transduction pathway. The molecules that relay a signal from receptor to response are mostly proteins. Like following dominoes, the receptor activates another protein, rejects it, activates another, and so on and so forth, until eventually the protein producing the response is activated. At each step, the signal is transduced into a different form usually a conformational or shape change. So when we talked about bacteria, and this happening with bacteria and having receptor proteins in the membrane and the signal binds, then I, I said, okay, it causes a chain reaction of events to eventually lead to a response. So this transduction is this train re chain reaction of events. So this molecule becomes activated, which activates another protein, which activates another one, and so on and so forth, until eventually, um, you get your response at the end. And so, <coughs> so how activation occurs is by phosphorylation and dephosphorylation. In many pathways, the signal is transmitted by a cascade of protein phosphorylations. Phosphatase enzymes remove the phosphates. And this phosphorylation and dephosphorylation system acts as a molecular switch, turning activities on and off. So when a molecule becomes activated in this cascade, how it becomes activated is it becomes phosphorylated. So when the molecule becomes phosphorylated, it's activated and can do a job. But then if the phosphate comes off, the phosphate's taken off, it goes back to deactivated. And so then it become, can become activated again by being phosphorylated and becomes active again and does something inside the cell and goes back and forth. So it's turned on and off by phosphorylation and dephosphorylation, which is what this picture here is showing you. So this picture, I'm gonna draw on this, is showing you this phosphorylation, what they call the phosphorylation cascade. So you have your signal molecule at the, um, uh, outside of the cell, binding to an intracell, uh, a receptor in the plasma membrane, like this here. And so what happens? So the first thing that happens is notice that it activates a relay molecule. So this relay molecule becomes activated. What this does, and we'll go over examples of this in, uh, probably tomorrow. Um, what this activated molecule does is going to activate another molecule. And so, so we get the series of molecules becoming activated. Notice here we have a series of molecules that are inactive and they're called protein kinases. So they just generically name this one protein kinase one, two, and three. Um, kinase means it's an enzyme, right? It ends in ace. And I talked about in the notes that a kinase molecule in general, that type of enzyme, what it does is phosphorylate things, all right? And so, so this inactive protein kinase becomes activated. So this is this becomes activated by the relay molecule. So the relay molecule activates protein kinase 1. All right, activated, activates, I'm going to put PK1, protein kinase 1. All right, so that's what we have going on here is this, now we have an activated enzyme, and it's a kinase enzyme, which means it's going to help add phosphate groups to molecules. And so now notice here we have inactive protein kinase 2. It's inactive and it becomes active. And how does it become active? What has happened from here to here? Phosphate group is added. Where did that phosphate group come from? ATP. So you use an ATP, it breaks down into ADP, and it loses a phosphate, and here's that phosphate. So this is that phosphate from ATP. This reaction to make this enzyme active now couldn't have occurred unless this enzyme catalyzes this. All right, so this active protein kinase um, activates protein kinase what? Two by what? By phosphorylating it. So now we have 
active protein kinase 2. Now this is an enzyme that also phosphorylates molecules. So now we see the same thing happens. We have inactive protein kinase 3 and it becomes active by adding a phosphate group. That phosphate group came from a second ATP. And so what did this active protein kinase do? This activated protein kinase 3 by phosphorylation. And this, they only show you a few of the kinase, but this can happen many, many times, all right? So this just keeps on happening until eventually at the end of the last protein kinase, this enzyme doesn't activate another protein kinase. You have an inactive protein in the cell, um, so this is just naturally in the cell, and it's inactive, and so this kinase phosphorylates that molecule, all right? So this is also from ATP. So this activates a protein by phosphorylation the protein by phosphorylation that will produce your response. So this is at the end. There's a response in the cell. And so notice here, that's what happens. So this is the cellular response. So that could be, you know, the cell is going to grow or it can help to trigger the cell to divide or something's going to go on inside the cell um, because of this active protein. And this active protein wouldn't be active and you wouldn't get the cellular response had you not had the signal molecule at the very beginning. Question. Okay, so pretty much the signal molecule activates the phosphorylation cascade, which activates that protein that's inside the cell, and that active protein goes to whatever it needs to go and then... It does something, yes. It does something inside the cell. So there can be a whole yeah. host of things. Absolutely. All right. All right, that's the big picture there. All right, and so that's called a phosphorylation cascade. So this part right here, all right, from here to here is that transduction part. It's everything between the reception and the cellular response. All right, and that is that. Oh, and then the second part of this that I want to point out is that when, a, when something's going on in the cell, do you necessarily want that something, whatever it is, to go on all the time for the rest of that cell's life? No. So we have to be able to shut this down. So how do you do that? Um, first off, is that the signal molecule can detach, all right? So the signal molecule detaches, but then you get all these active protein kinases. So then we have another type of molecule, um, an enzyme that takes the phosphate off of these active molecules. And when you take the phosphate off of them, it deactivates them. What was the name of that enzyme? Phosphatase, all right? So phosphatase enzyme, so they just, abbreviated this as PP, all right, um, for there. So what happens is when this enzyme is active because of the phosphate groups, after it does its job and activates the next kinase, this group of enzymes called phosphatases take the phosphate off. So this enzyme, which is phosphatase, Dephosphorylates, that means take it off the, the phosphate group. Phosphorylate the protein kinase. Making it inactive again. And that's what we see here. So it dephosphorylates it and um, now it goes back to inactive. And so, but it's already done its job. It's activated protein kinase three. So then when, what is protein kinase three's job is to activate this protein. So once it's done its job, then phosphatase deactivates protein kinase three. 
and so on and so forth. And then even at the very end, your active protein, your active protein can also be dephosphorylated, all right, in the same manner, all right? And so that way you don't get your cellular response happening all the time. So to get, to get a continual cellular response, you have to have a constant um, signal molecule. So the signal molecule, as I said, doesn't stay, put, doesn't stay on there forever, so it detaches. And, but it triggers this cascade. So in order for this cellular response to, to continue, you have to have a continual supply of signal molecules, all right? And so in our body, that could be a hormone that's released, let's say, from your pituitary gland and goes to another gland, let's say your pancreas or something like that, to cause a change to happen at that organ. And so in order for that change to continue to happen, you have to have a continual supply of that hormone to trigger this, yes. So like what happens when it's a permanent change and it needs to be a permanent change? Is it just always supplying that hormone? Or yeah, if that change needs to happen all the time. Usually changes that uh, are permanent aren't controlled by hormones okay. necessarily. But yes, but if you do have it, you have to have a continuous supply of that hormone. All right, and so that's why levels of hormone, like in humans, levels of hormones and things like that. If you get your, if you have too low of certain hormones, you get side effect. You know, because the whatever's, you know, it's not going to be causing this to happen and get your cellular response that you're supposed to. All right, when, when that's okay, so you can have all different kinds of side effects from that. Okay, all right, and so <laughs> so that is your phosphorylation kit. I think this is a good spot to stop. All right, because um, we have a couple of minutes left, so let's stop here.